Hey, Dennis O'Brien back again with another great show. I've had three in a row now without Susan Johnson. And uh, now I've got a fourth. And she's not here yet, but she might be stopping by. I know she wants to stop by to see her. Oh, I see her coming. She's she's on her way. She couldn't resist coming in to see her old friend, Ray Axelrod, from the Connecticut Eastern Railroad Museum. Hi out there. It's train time again. We're doing Railroad Day on the 30, Saturday the 31st. Love to see everybody down there. So that should be about, what, 3,000 people? He starts who are, right in. Look at him. He's, he, doesn't know, he doesn't have to wait for me to ask him a question or anything. He's, that's because he was trained well. You know, Ray goes back a long way with Susan and I. Right, Ray? You've yes, known yes. us for about decades, I'd say. Yeah, let's call it that, because yep. otherwise we'll give out our ages. Well, I, I, everybody knows how old I am, that I'm 96, but, you know... At least 106. No, 100, <laughs> 100, 11 to 11. 11 to 11. Oh. There you go, in the All right, we're, we're adjusting the chairs now. We're moving Ray over to his proper position in the middle, <laughs> on the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> on the hot seat. Anyway, Ray worked with... Uh, Susan and I both worked for Connecticut Legal Services. Uh-huh. And uh, Ray uh, was, a, I think, a student volunteer, right? Yeah. You, you were a UConn student? Vol- no, I was already graduated. You were already time. graduated, but you were yep. a volunteer. Yep. For about and working with the uh, Medicare unit, right? Yep. And Susan was also with the Medicare unit. Uh, were you at that time, Susan? I was. I remember when you said you were going to Clark University. Yep. Is that <laughs> where you went, Clark? I, I did, and I done. Yeah, you did. You went yeah. to Clark in Worcester? Yep. It must yeah. be a cool place. I yeah, and now they've taken over half of Main South. Before they were just behind Main Street, now they own half the frontage on Main Street. Well, you know, it was private schools. Anyway, that's uh, that's one of many colleges in Worcester. Worcester's 11. A college, the huh? consortium was 11, co- I think, 11 colleges. Wow. They're having a problem now in Worcester, aren't they, uh, with uh, college expansions? Uh, WPI, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. was looking at the Spectrum Channel, yeah. and w, they're trying to stop WPI from buying two of the hotels. Right, down. yeah, so yeah. it's going to ruin their economy there, because they paid, the hotels pay taxes, and the universities Well, Worcester is, yeah, better. Plus Worcester Worcester is bigger off. than any town right. in Connecticut, population-wise. Well, I believe it's isn't it the second biggest city in New England. And it's the second biggest city in Massachusetts and in New England. That's right. And it's uh, I used to go up there once in a while to see a basketball game at uh, up on Mount St. James, Holy Cross. Holy Cross. Holy Cross, up, Cross was up uh, the mountain from from College Square. That's right. Holy Cross at one time was a uh, basketball powerhouse. In fact, they were I think they were national champions in the late forties. <laughs> Anyway, Ray's here. We're talking, let's talk about the here and the now. Ray's here. Ray, Ray, you have been with the Connecticut Eastern Railroad Museum since its inception? Just about. Almost. I, I was watching the inception in different forms in the late 80s there. I really didn't join until about 92 when we actually formed the chapter. Because it began with the Friends of the Valley Railroad. Yeah. Etc. Where you know they were going to form a museum that looked at Palmer, looked at Danbury, ended up in Thomaston. Did you know that Susan Johnson played a role in that? Susan? Yes, I did. I uh, well, what happened is uh, that I'm, 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 but now the person who's the engineer that was helping with us uh, and trot at UConn. Art Hall. Yes, I think it was Art Hall. Uh, Anyway, he came to the council. There were the board of selectmen back then. I was on the board of selectmen from 89 to 92. And they suggested that they, uh, you know, have this railroad museum where people would come and pitch in and, and we have the museum and they'd pitch in and do the work to, you know, and all volunteers. And, and so I made a motion to give them the $1,500 to start it all. And uh, that's, that's when uh, we were able to start that. I didn't, uh, yeah. didn't know that one, but yeah, sounds yeah. good. So you better write that one down, Ray. So, I <laughs> so we got that $1,500, and sure enough, lo and behold, uh, the work that was promised by uh, the engineer who came before us, uh, Mr. Hall, uh, and... and um, He's actually been on the show with us as well when we did the um, uh, the Wyndham Works show a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think that may be, well it may also have been Adrian. I I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure. Well, Adrian, yeah. we've we've had Adrian on the show. Yeah, definitely. I think it was Adrian that came before us. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, uh, so we, 
And just a few years later, there was so much work being done. So many people have a passion for the railroad system and the history of the railroad. And it was wonderful to see the amazing work that's done. And now today, little ones and older people all love to go down to the Railroad Museum because of the amazing work, the volunteer work that's been done. And it's just, uh, it's quite, quite stunning, all the, uh, all yeah, the things you have, have we there. We have the Garden Railroad. We have the Kidscape. We have the, the Mary Lou Locomotive. It's actually the little locomotive that was out by, what's the, the store, uh, the something and something garden barn, the, the gift shop on 14. On Route 14? Because it would have been in Scotland. Oh. No, in Willimantica. Well, oh, right, Willimantica. Right at the top. Oh, the top oh, hill. oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they had those toy was train that, things. Those runs? I, the, I remember the gift shop. Anyway, Thank you. but they had the toy train, a couple of cars and stuff. Oh, and yeah. that, actually, that actually was from kits that were sold or yeah. put, put oh, out oh, that's great. back in the 50s. Yeah. But it needed work, and Mary Lou DeVivo donated major money to re rebuild that. And then we got further money to rebuild a few more cars that go along with it so the kids can crawl on them and, and stomp on them and stuff like that. That's what kids do. Anyway, uh, gotta make it all, and it all started, folks, with $1,500 yes. from the big spending board of selectmen of the town of Wyndham. Yeah, and they they didn't become big spenders until I got on the town council. <laughs> I see. Oh, they big, also donated money liberal. for a number of years. There was some, a little bit of money in the, in the budget for the, for the Rail Museum the, as well. The so, you Wyndham. know, there's been help, and there's been help from yeah. engineering grants and fire department and different things over the years. I mean, Who takes care of all that, of, of uh, uh, recording all that? They must have a treasurer or somebody who keeps we the got books. treasurer and historian and, yeah, it's all it's all pretty well noted. But you, Ray, are the spokesperson. Well, I'm, I'm one, I'm one, you're of, one the, of several. You're one but, of the spokespeople. But whenever we do a show, sometimes we've had people on with you, but you, you, you were always there. Yeah. I want, always to, here. I want to monopolize your waves a little. <laughs> well, you be, you we're glad like, you're here. You want to be like me. It's a little ego trip. You want to, no, you want to be like <laughs> Wayno. Do it every day. Uh, five days a week. Anyway, we're happy to have you here. Uh, on your, This is pretty much your annual trip to WILI. Yep, well, my annual for, pilgrimage. For, on Let's Talk About It, you're also going to be, of course, on the Big Guys show next week. Yep, next Tuesday morning. Next Tuesday, he will appear with Wayno. Mm -hmm. And um, we know I'll probably give you what twenty minutes, maybe? twenty to forty. Yeah, yeah. Today, today we give you a, we give right. you almost a whole hour. Yeah. Not well, quite. I, I thank you, and the museum thanks you. Well, well we, we, we've we been there the many museum. times. We, I have many great photographs of uh, mm -hmm. Susan and I at the, enjoying ourselves at the museum. One thing we do whenever we go to the uh, railroad day is that uh, we run into people we haven't seen in a while because mm -hmm. you know people a lot of people go. Oh yeah, I do. You know, I I vend some. Some wares or Riverdiana, as it's called. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I get to visit with a lot of people going down there mm -hmm. that day, and there, you know, there are a lot of people who have come year. You know, maybe they don't come every year, yeah. but they're there every second year. Right. And it's really nice to see people ba coming back. Usually, when I see you yeah. there, though, you're always on your way to be doing something, and I never get a chance to t uh, to talk to you there. That's another reason why we have you on the show, because uh, unless unless we're you know here in the studio with you. Susan is waving at me. She wants to say something. Well, go ahead. Finish your sentence. All right, I just, you know, we don't get a chance to talk to him. <laughs> you're you're one of the few that said, didn't say, Raymond, be quiet for a while. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't no, do that. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm afraid if I do I, that, I'm kidding that, somebody will say that to me. And, and that, that is, you know, and somebody does every once in a while. Somebody actually who's in the room. So, so anyway. yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I, I'm sorry I came in a little bit late, but and you might have already said this, no. but do you have uh, entertainment? Because sometimes you have people... Uh, doing... I don't know what the entertainment is. Oh. I know Duke's going up there. I know we have a couple of other p bands coming. Okay. I'm not sure of the names. Duke you'll York. Have, you'll uh, have to come on down yeah. and see. All right. Lots but... of train songs, food, souvenirs, train rides, demonstrations. I love the lots of fun. I love all the things that you put on there, and and, and the history and the chatter about the history and, and that sort of thing, and the, going through the equipment that you have there, and the, and the model trains that have been renovated, and uh, tell us a little bit about those things that you've uh, renovated and uh, and that sort of thing, because I'm I'm fascinated well, with what you've done there. If everybody knows Bev York, yeah, and some people might know Duke, right? Bev claims they're married. 
<laughs> but Duke got lost down at the railroad museum for like two thousand hours worth of volunteer time, renovating the one of the CV cabooses we have. Uh huh. So you know that I guess that's the ultimate um, guy shed. But anyway, <laughs> that's one story. That's and, a good one. Yeah, I love that. I hadn't heard two thousand hours. I know, I know Duke is over two thousand hours, and then he was like begging other members, you know, come and you know. Do 15, 20 minutes of sanding. You know, I'm yeah. getting, my hands are wearing out here. <laughs> but, yeah, he did a wonderful job. And we also have the Rutland Caboose is another piece. It was, that was renovated and donated by someone from the Talcott family. And then we have the um, FL9, which was donated by the state of Connecticut. And that's actually the dual mode power that used to go between New Haven and Grand Central. And we have many other pieces that yeah. we're working on all the time. We're doing, trying to do a lot of track work now. We need, we need Susan to come up with a grant. I don't know from where, but <laughs> well, to okay. to put in Ooh, new ties and work very on the clever. rail. Yeah, well, I, I figured I'd stick that, that yes to yeah. lobby. That's why he was so happy when you walked uh, in, Susan. <laughs> Well, I'm glad yeah, to help right. you. You gotta have, uh, you know, we can work uh, certainly with um, Jordan Lumpkins. He's the uh, our new uh, grant writer, and this is uh, this is something that's state, but it's also local. So preserving the history here uh, is very very important, and I'm hoping that the preservation of the history of railroads will maybe give us a little bit of an idea of maybe. Going back to the future, so we can have <laughs> we can have yeah, well, uh, I, we can have I, rail systems all right, the way right, through right Connecticut. Right here on my yes. notes to Dennis, yes, yes, I I put you know future rail service. Yeah, we and talk I, about that all, every time you're on, and I because I we uh, Susan and I both love trains. Yeah, yeah. well, Am Amtrak did do a study about a college corridor train, which yes. would break off like at Northfield and come off down New England Central yep. to New London, it served like. Potentially 11 colleges within 20 miles. 60,000 students. Yeah. Cause you I have remember UMass, that. UMass, UConn, Eastern, the New London colleges. Connecticut and College. Some, yeah. 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 Yeah, it would be wonderful. And that was, uh, and I did mention this, uh, uh, Joe, uh, Congressman Joe Courtney hosted an event at Eastern Connecticut State University, la not this last Thursday, but the Thursday before. And I went around and talked to all the organiza federal organizations. And um, I did talk to the, the Federal Department of Transportation and our State Department of Transportation about doing more rail. And that was something that I did mention. So, you know, that's uh, maybe... It's still in, in, the, in the back burner somewhere. Right. But it would be good be, if yeah. you're looking at trying to save energy and the, um, ap and the atmosphere and being more green, the rail well, is the, the way to there go. there was also that ancient proposal we did when we had the transit alliance from Eastern Connecticut, yeah. which was to get the, um, the gambling train from Wellington down to the museum. Not, not to the casino, not to the museum. Yeah, I was, I was wondering. We could make that. the we, yeah, well, we, we could make the museum a mini, you know, sure. a mini casino right get there. Get there, get there, you know. Oh, that's an idea. That might get the real going. That would. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there was a uh, there was actually an article by the infamous Chris Powell, who writes in the who writes in the Chronicle. I disagree with about ninety five percent of what he says, but one thing he said was, um, next thing you know, I guess the there there uh, somebody has been encouraging the. Uh, Native American tribes from Western Connecticut, like the Golden Hill Pagusets, who are not—I I don't think they're federally um, recognized. Recognized, and, not yet. And, and, and I know because our Connecticut Legal Services actually represented them for a while. And I remember I pinch hit one time as a supervisor in in working with Moonface Bear, who was a member of the Golden Hill Pagusset tribe, who was located uh, not in Bridgeport, which is where Golden Hill is. But uh, I think he was in Middletown, or maybe even closer to closer to Wy uh, Wyndham. And I went to see him, and he was wearing bandoleros, and I was quite blown away by that. I hadn't seen bullets since I was in the U.S. Army in the '60s, when I was when I was uh, conscripted into the army during the early part of the Vietnam War. Anyway, um, I anyway, Chris Paul. I digressed a little bit there. Chris Paul. <laughs> Chris Paul suggested that maybe if they're going to give more. Um, uh, potential uh, potential for casinos in in that area of the state. Maybe they should open it up to people who are not necessarily indigenous. 
And there you go. You know, there you go. Possibility. Who knows? You never I, know. I was thinking a sub uh, sub location. Anyway. No, I was thinking, you know, uh, I, I thought you were talking about a location right at the museum. Yeah. Take a tour. And, and, but, take a tour. Machines. Play some play, play the slots. But it would be aligned with Mohegan Sun to keep people happy. Well, that would yeah. be the way oh, yeah. to you get good funding. Uh, Mohegan Sun would... Uh, so yeah, maybe that's what we got to do. we got to spend some time down there with the people who run it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, the museum it seems to be... Uh, you know, every time I go there, there's something new. There's always some something that was is there, whether it, it might it might be it might be a you know a, a vehicle that I've seen before, but it's improved. It's, there's always progress being made. We're always trying to do work. We're always we we just got did the roof on the um, Nan Tower, which was the, t the tower control tower for the Niantic River Bridge. Wow! That we got, we got donated from Amtrak. We also do repainting of the buildings. We're looking, right now we're looking at, I guess, it's the freight house that we're looking and putting a, a more authentic roof on. The yeah, building so that I've always been fascinated with is, you know what I'm going to say, the roundhouse. Yeah. And what, you know, the roundhouse is amazing, and uh, why don't you tell our listeners, because not everybody is as knowledgeable as you are. The roundhouse... And not even it, as I am. The roundhouse is simply a garage for locomotives, but it's an important thing, especially in the days of steam. It was a place where they could bring the locomotives in, keep them nestled, you know, like the railroad's children. But in the days of steam, you would... You would bring in a steam locomotive, do any minor work you had to do on it, as well as bring the fire down to a low level, and then at about four in the morning, before the crews came in to, for the yard switcher or anything like that, they would build up the pressure and the fire in the locomotive, fill the coal and water, and get things ready for the daytime crew work. So it was, it was also a place to do light repairs, store the locomotives, as well as service them and keep them warm on cold winter nights. Roundhouse, though, it, it, it goes it's, around. Yeah. We have a six-stall roundhouse, which is a replica of the roundhouse that was built there in, like, 1898. But actually, down at New Haven, west of the station, there were two roundhouses that were full circles with, like, 48 stalls in them, and the 49th stall was left open so they could bring a track right in to the turntable in the center, and the turntable actually could let you line up the locomotive with which stall you wanted to put it in. And, and, that, and that, that also can line up the locomotive with, you know, getting out of there. Yeah, and also turn the locomotive the track. to go, you know, to reverse direction. Actually, right now, I, walked, I got here a little bit early, and I see the city is working on that parking thing, right down by where the old Agway, which is actually a former American Thread warehouse, if you look on the on the geological survey or, you know, the topo map on the web in the wintertime, you can actually see the contrast where the turntable there was. Because New York and New England came in from the northeast on the airline. Hartford Providence and Fishkill, Fishkill was east-west. New England Central, or formerly the CV, was north-south down to New London and up to Montreal, mm. and the airline came in from New Haven. So there are actually three or four different railroads if you go back in the 1860s, 70s era, that eventually everything became the New Haven or the CV. You mentioned Montreal. I... Uh Montreal or Montreal or what is, what's the, what is the Montreal? We, we had the, we had the Montreal from eighty nine to ninety five. This is but what I thought. Stop, it was only a stop from like eighty one or ninety one to ninety five. It didn't last, but but I can remember. Because well, they rerouted. I can remember the Susan talked about being on the on the board of selectmen from eighty nine to ninety two. That was that was your first tour of duty on the sports like when you went on later on for another two year term before right. you went to law school. Yeah, no, I I went on, I went on eighty nine. Yeah, and that's two years to four. You went on for, you were on for then, four years. I guess it was ninety three. Three because I started law school in ninety two. But but it was in eighty nine when Walter, uh, ninety one when Walter Polakiewicz ran for first selectman. 
Right. And I was I was his campaign it's manager. Yeah. And I remember uh, we uh, the, the night the Montrealer came in. We had 1,200 people. I was there. We, we, we shut down headquarters. We were working every night, making phone calls. We used to be well, very you effective. You probably weren't calling that late because it was 1 o'clock or so by yes. the time. The well, we waited. We I waited. Did. But we, yeah. le- we, le- we left uh, earlier than we normally would, and we were waiting with everybody else for it to come in. Yeah. And there was the crowd just kept building and building and building. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. The people on the, the, people on the train were like, are all those people getting on the train? They weren't, but no. It actually, you know, they were like but, walking out the window at the crowd. But it was delightful. The train was headed north, north Montreal. Uh, okay, it was headed to Montreal. It didn't. It wasn't coming from right. Uh, okay, the, so, the so southbound so would be like from, two hours later, about three thirty in the morning. Came from where? In London? No. Well, what you what we saw came from Washington, New Haven, New London, up to Northfield, then got oh, back on okay, the river okay, line okay, and okay, on to Montreal. Okay. okay. But 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 it did come from London. But yes, London was not the first. Uh, you you know. know why they changed the route? Well, there's a donor to a certain presidential party, but we won't go into that. <laughs> Tim Mellon of the Pittsburgh banking family bought the B and M, the Main Central, and the D and H, and then basically, well, as Dam- Dave Ramsey would put it, um, went on a great campaign of customer disservice. Mm. And let the Amtrak was paying a million dollars a year for maintenance between Springfield and Northfield. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, up to Windsor because it was actually a B and M line at the time. B and M let the maintenance go from fifty forty five fifty miles an hour to about five or ten mm. in the mud. And finally, in in eighty seven, Amtrak pulled the train. And in the ensuing two years, basically, Amtrak used this eminent domain clause, turned the rail over to Central Vermont from Northfield up to Windsor, Vermont. It stayed under B&M control below that, so that's why they diverted off onto CV completely. Amtrak provided the maintenance money, and the train came back on through Willimantic, Palmer, and up to Northfield, rejoining the original line there. And that was why the reroute. In 90, late 94 and 95, Amtrak put in a switch at Palmer at the west end of the yard, and that's when the train went back on the Hartford-Springfield routing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this one, is the one, kind one, of information one, you're not going to get on the Wayne Norman show. Well, yep, you may not want it all, but I may not want it all. I love this information. This is great. But and the other thing that I was going to try and say, I was going to try and say something. I'm glad I didn't get caught on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just going to say, uh, one of the things that I hear today about, you know, getting rail, that we need to do more freight rail in order to have it pay for the passenger rail. And I'm wondering, have, is that is that still the situation we're in? Probably. It sure helps a lot. It, you know, if nothing else, where there is freight, it's going to pick up a major part of the cost. There's different funding for freight lines and stuff, as well as a maintenance quotient. <laughs> okay, that's that's excellent information. So what we need is more manufacturing, which is one of the things that uh, is being uh, suggested now and being done throughout the country. If we had more manufacturing, we had more freight. Yep, it would be great. That yeah. is being suggested. It is being worked on, and to some extent, it is moving in the right direction. But it is, uh, you know, it's a process. Takes time, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's time for our break. We're getting the sign from, in in no uncertain terms, from Matt Rupar, our wonderful producer. And it's time to take a break and listen to our wonderful sponsors. And we want to remind you that we're sponsored by. Generally, this the show is brought to us by, is in general, by the Gates. Um, GMC, Gates in GMC, Columbia Ford. And, right, in Columbia Ford. And, and, <laughs> and uh, the Gates, garage. you know, <laughs> Great Gates and Denny Gates, and we we really appreciate them. They've sponsored us for almost 25 years. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. This is Susan Johnson. I'm here with my co-host, Dennis O'Brien, and our very special guest this evening, Ray Axelrod, who does so much wonderful work with our Railroad Museum here, right here in town. And we're just about to talk about uh, when they're having their event at the Railroad Museum. But first, how do you get to the Railroad Museum? 
Well, that's that's a conundrum. But the simplest answer is, if you go down from Main Street, as soon as your right tire leaves the tracks, hang a right, go up the dirt road, which is partly paved, that goes between the rail and the river. That's the problem. If you try to trust the GPS, you're going to land in, in the cemetery looking at the museum, but not in the museum. And no way to cross the tracks unless you've got... You've got power flight like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on your car. There you have it. <laughs> All right. What is, it, what is the street? What is the name of the street that you turn onto to get to the museum? Museum driveway. No, no, no. Oh, before, trail. before that. Bridge Street. That's the, that's Bridge Street. It's yes. not Mountain Street. Yeah. No, okay. no, you yeah. don't get to Mountain Street till you get to the mountain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. And there you get house from Mountain Soda. <laughs> yeah, I just came from there. I'm here with and, a hell, and a hell of a hill that'll give you a heart attack if you. Run up I'm here yeah. with a couple of comedians, <laughs> but, but it, is, it is good. It's all good. Yeah. Anyway, you know, the, the, you just take a. It, well, if you're heading, if you're heading west on Main Street, you take a left, yeah. on, onto Bridge, yeah. and then, As, and you're well, almost at, you're almost there. Find the turn. sign in the con- in the conglomeration of stuff by the railroad crossing, and just head up there. You'll find us. I saw there you have a sign out there now about your event and the time frames. Is that right? That is right. We yes, have two signs, one oh. for southbound and or northbound, yeah. one for southbound. On Bridge Street. So, yeah. yeah. Right, by the so, crossing. So you just take a look over there, depending on which way you're going, and, uh, you know, you can see You'll the sign. You'll find us. You have, to, going you have to work with the dirt road along the rail trail, and yeah. it's basically about three-quarters of a mile up to where yeah, parking is. Yeah, it's not is. that close. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's No, it's equal, ways down. it's equal with Stop and Shop and... Burger King area. Uh, wow. Or just, uh, you know, Bridge Street Plaza, just behind the Bridge Street Plaza. On If you're facing the Bridge Street Plaza, it's on the right-hand side because the left-hand side of the Bridge Street Plaza is the river. Yep. And if you're northbound, it'll be on the left side. <laughs> there you go. I just had to put that one in. I'm almost you confused now. <laughs> that was the idea. <laughs> but, 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 but I... But I I, I, I I know that most of the people, a lot of the people that go there are people who have been there before. Because anybody who goes to Railroad Day at the Eastern East, Connecticut Eastern Railroad Museum enjoys it and wants to come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm bad. I'm here to fluster, <laughs> fluster Dennis today. But other than that, I want to give some straight information. Yeah, and if, if you get down the driveway, we'll... We'll have food, we'll have music, we're doing train, short train rides around the museum area and part way down. We're trying to work more on those rails down toward Bridge Street. And we'll also have maintenance demos and talk about the museum. We have push car rides available, and we'll demonstrate the turntable a couple of times during the day. Lots to see and do. Come on down. I don't know if I'm, if I'm in good enough shape to do the push car anymore. I'm gonna, I'll have to try it at some point. Do your arms move? Yeah. Okay. Can you stand up? Yeah. Yeah. You can Sometimes do it. Push <laughs> yeah. Go slow. I've done the push car before, uh, many times, but I haven't done it for two or three years. I've, I, you know why? Because when when I've been there, there's been so many people there and so many kids that want to use the push car that I I would have had to stand in line. And <clears throat> for me, standing in line is not a good use of my time. So I I, I moved on to something else. Probably ran into. Uh, people that I wanted to talk to that I hadn't talked to in a while, well, which sure. is one of the great things about going to the uh, railroad day. You, you run into people that you haven't seen in a while, sort of like Third Thursday. Dennis is a politician. He talks. <laughs> he does talk to. Well, he? I, I, you know, <laughs> it's a good thing. That's why. That's why they have <laughs> me on the show twenty five years now. That's right. Huh? That's yeah. why you're. That's your. You're the community information man. But I never. I never get. I, you get on the Wayne Norman show more than I do. I can't get on the show. I, I, I come to the door and they they see my face and I, they lock the door. Be here Tuesday at 7.30. No. I'll let I'm, you on I'm, with me. No, I'll be listening. No, no, you don't we'll, want me We'll force Wayne into it. No, no you, don't, you won't you have enough. You can talk about, we'll let, even let you have no. two minutes to talk about baseball. It, he'll throw me out. <laughs> there you he'll go. He'll throw me out. There you go. I'll throw you out. There's, there you there's, a, go. there's a card right here with, the, with you striking out on it. He yeah. knows, striking out, he knows enough. He knows enough about me. I have people that uh, actually try to shut me down, and um, Wayne is one of them. So, um, you know, and I, you know, I think he's smart to do that. It all depends. Oh, what depends. you're saying? <laughs> well, when he's trying to do a show with another guest, he doesn't want me uh, mucking it up. But I'm glad that it's, t- it's that time of year 
when railroad day is coming okay. up. It's, it's always I, around this time, right? Since I'm growing older, I'm going to honor one of my brothers with with a bad joke. Okay. Ed in Knoxville, this goes out to you. Well, which would you like? What kind of undergarments? Well, boxers, briefs, depends. Oh, I played off of Wayne, off of Dennis's. Oh, word. that is very good, very very good. And you know, oh, maybe oh, depends oh. will actually uh, sponsor us next yuck, time. Yuck yuck yuck. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, rescued by Susan. <laughs> Okay, we're there back. On, we're back on. We we're always want to sponsor. On, on, ILI says yes. We're back on topic now. <laughs> okay, it's it's the thirty. It's actually the thirty first of October. Yes, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Of what? And no. Sat- yeah. What? It's the end of summer. Did, did I say October? Yes, I said I said October. Yes, it's August. Did. August. Please. August thirty first. Thank you. Please. Okay. Let's it's get the Saturday most. of Labor Day weekend. See, I did, my hearing's so bad, I didn't hear Dennis's hair. If Biden and Trump can do that, I can do it, right? You're not going to do that here. <laughs> well, at least I corrected I th- my hair. I thought, I thought we were leaving the orange hair and Uncle Chester I heard my own. <laughs> I heard my own error, and I acknowledged it. It's August 31st, first. I just said what, and you didn't it's, really. It's a, it, Thank you. Today is Friday the 23rd. It's eight days from today. Ray, Ray's, Ray's come on a little early to get everybody... Yeah. Charged up. Fired up. Yep. About and railroad day. Had a had a fall in line with Dennis's availability on the show since his popular place. Very popular. Place. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Popular. That's right. Yes. That's right. People Ray, love Ray, the show. I ran into Ray at the polls on, the, yeah. on election the last election day, oh, and good. he comes over to me and said, "Hey, Dennis, <laughs> you have, when you have an opening for me to talk about That's railroad right. day?" I said, "Oh my God, if we don't have one, Ray, we will make one." But we we did find we did find the date. And yeah, today, all of today. a sudden we find it's the end of summer already. It's a, kind of unbelievable. That's, that's, you that's know it, how that's many times I've part. heard that from people. Well, it was too <laughs> darn hot, and all of a sudden now it's cold. It's time to go back to school. And yeah, stuff. it got cold fast, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not cold usually. No, it's early. nice, but yeah. it's just weird. Well, I, yeah, well, I, I agree. Know, August, August twenty, usually you can see a. A flip. A bit of a change but in the, the weather and some cold and some trees start turning. And I think it happened sooner yeah. than this. I mean, it started to, right at the very beginning of August, really. It started to get really cool around the 8th or well, so. Well, it's that time of the year for Railroad Day. and uh, mm. Yeah, you know, we're hoping for weather just like today on that day. Oh, yeah, this well, is so, an excellent so day. So that, that's the politicking job that Dennis has now. He, Wayne he, Norman, he has to talk with Mother Nature. Yeah. Wayne Norman will take care of that for you. Oh, that's, thought, his, yeah, that's, that's his that's job. True. Uh, he controls the, the weather as, the as weather. he yes. Yeah. yes. He controls Very the weather good. unless it goes wrong. But yeah. but I think uh, if you talk to him next Tuesday, I'm sure he'll he'll be able to let he'll you know. It. And by the way, the ten day forecast, you can find it on the computer. And, and you know, it it's looks, it's not looks cert- fairly decent. Good, good. Uh, okay, That's so good. One, of, one of the things I'd like to ask about the museum, I know you do so many things. What are some of the uh, goals and objectives that you have uh, coming up? You mentioned that you wanted to have a grant uh, of some sort. But tell us a little bit about what, what your future what your future focus well, is at this point. We, we'd always, we'd love to get a visitor center in, but there's a number of problems with that because we've, by the way things function and regulations and stuff, you actually have to technically have pot- a source of potable water before you can have fully serviceable non-potable water huh. as a public, as a museum open to the public. So right. we've got to do a water connection, we've got to do a sewer connection, etc. There's some issues around that. So in the meanwhile, we're we're on porta potty status, but. You know, that would be a nice thing. That's an ultimate goal. There is a sewer line that runs by there, but that is a sewer connector, not a thermal public, you know, sewer line or something. I don't know the whole details of sure, that. Sure. But I know that argument has come back and forth, you know, from probably from day one a little bit. We'd always like more funding, it, like any museum, whether it's President's Crandall House, Mark Twain House. Red Cross, us, the Textile Museum, you're always looking for funding. You're always looking for volunteers. 
and it does not have to be specifically railroad related. We need people to write grants. We need people to paint. We need people to come up with program ideas. We need people. We need people. Yeah. Bottom line. So one of the other questions that I have about the people that you need and the focus of for the future is, uh, you know. Uh, do you go to other places that have railroad museums and talk to how they do things? Probably a bit less in the in the last few years, but over the years there has been some some meetings and coordination between the railroad museums in Connecticut to either share equipment or even rescue some th- some pieces of equipment. Something went to the Danbury, and one piece came to us at the same time. There was another time the um, the Trolley Museum in East Windsor wanted to get rid of some equipment they had from Cheney, and they looked. They talked to the different museums of who might take a couple of cars from there. And the, there's always different things. Is also for cooperation. The way we get new ties that were new to us is actually a shared program with. When Metro North does maintenance, Metro North or Amtrak do maintenance, if there are good ties that are left over from the passenger line, the freight railroads in Connecticut are first priority, Province of Worcester, Houstonic, and New England Central. But then then the museums are next. The Valley Railroad, I believe, is at the top of that list because they are also a facility run on DEP land at this time, or DEP, get that right. Yep. And, you know, we're seventh or eighth on that list, but it has been of great help. Mm, would it and, be? I'm sorry. But no, I mean, that. so track work is one area, and then, because we'd like to actually complete the Y around the back of the museum, and with the stub going out toward the bridge on the airline trail, yeah. where we have, where the museum right-of-way ends with the Grand Canyon, that is a connector up to Mackey's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So would it help if all the museum-type, railroad museum-type people would maybe have like a, a get-together in the winter sometime and, uh, and chatter about uh, the spring yeah, and, and what you're going to do? Yeah, and they have. I mean, the, yeah. over, over the years, there have been different meetings, plus our group and the Sono Tower Museum, we're both chapters of the National Railway Historical Society, which also writes grants to museum groups. We've got grants from the Mass Bay Rail Club. We've got great grants from the Amherst Rail Society. So, you know, some of that already exists, but Susan could actually run with the idea of sponsoring a railroad museum license plate like, like Pennsylvania has. Oh, I like that. And I'd like to also wonder if you would have a railroad day at the Capitol, maybe. I don't know how you do that, but we can figure well, yeah, that out, I'm people, sure. The people that you get together with uh, for some of those, you know, when when everything's closed down yeah, and we're in it, session. Have then. everybody come in and talk yeah, about it with a, yeah, and then with you put a up demo, a, demo is, and a vision. Yeah, have you been to the, when they go to the Capitol and they have like a different group? Yeah, I was there yeah. at one point for 11.99, probably yeah, with yeah. CCAJ and sure. I don't know, different, yeah, so, different stuff over the years. Sure. sure. So it would be something that I could put in for and maybe, uh, you know, see if we get, a, get some space and work with you and the other uh, museum groups and uh, have people walk through. Have, a, have them walk through we and talk do, about the railroad. We could rail. do a Lego display of the railroad museum. Plus, you Le- know, it's not far from where you have the train station right there, uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump well, over the train at, station at Bradley in Field, there was that, that wonderful Mark Twain house imitation yeah. made out of Legos. Did yeah. you see that? No, I did not. A few years no, ago? No. About four it. years. About Two years before yeah. COVID, See, I, I should say. travel more, yes. <laughs> yeah. Then, then Dennis could play at the Reverend Museum more. Yeah. <laughs> he's oh, smiling, yeah. at least. <laughs> I'm quiet now. Oh, he's quiet? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the conversation oh, between well, you thank two. thank you. Thank you. I'm learning here. This yeah, is, but I'd love to put experience. that together, because I think, I think the museum, <clears throat> I'm hoping... Uh, my hope for the museum and where we have them all throughout the country is that it inspires people to say, hey, we need to do more with the rail systems. Yeah. Well, and, I'm- and, you know, if one of the things here, we're being so isolated out here in eastern Connecticut, if we were able to connect the rail to Hartford, connect the rail to Springfield, connect well, if, the rail... Well, if the Amtrak thing, if the Amtrak's new plan for the Northeast Corridor didn't go through Hart, through under Yukon, it'd go... 
on the old airline. But anyway, that's well, all different. Yeah, well, you Locational know, problem and logistics. Well, we need we need to figure these things out. But, you know, it's going to be great for economic development in eastern Connecticut if we can get a better rail service. No doubt about it. It's a good, good idea. And, you know, we're here mostly... Uh, we talked about a lot, a lot of history, a lot of uh, what's going on at the museum on a day-to-day -day basis, but we want, we want to emphasize the fact that there is a special day coming up. Right, Ray? So come to Railroad Day, Saturday the 31st of August, Connecticut Eastern Rail Museum, Bridge Street, Willamette, Connecticut. We'll see you there. we got train rides and food, and Max sending us... Will there be speakers? If you come, you can speak. No, I'm not. <laughs> not, no, not no. really speakers. No, we're I mean, we're going to have the music, and we'll say uh, a few thank, thanks hate, to the community and things. Yeah. I hate to admit it publicly, there. but I'm not qualified to speak about the railroads. Oh, yeah. I'm right, talking about you. But Susan is. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah. I will be there to speak. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's been great thank having you, you Ray. It's, uh, yeah, thank you. you know, the annual visit, it goes by too fast. Railroad Day coming up. August 31st. And you Saturday. said you said about your sponsor. I stopped the league sign at Frank Motors. They wouldn't give me an oil change. So they can check it soon. All right. Very so, good. That's very nice. So I'm going to put that out to you guys. All right. Okay. Which, which means, would you like to sign it? Very long. Sure. Let's talk about it. Sure. Here's sure. each week at this time <laughs> on 14 right. WILI Radio. Right. So okay, is, is it, are we up? Are we done? Hey, Dennis O'Brien, Susan Johnson, and Ray Axelrod, Matt. Okay, we'll be back next week with another great show. Thank you.